Phil took his different route and he went overseas. But more than any of the rugby experiences, what might stand out is the characters you met, Phil, and some of the stories from some of those places. As I know, you've got a couple of stories under your belt. <laughs> I mean, how long do we have on this podcast? Because, yeah. uh, <laughs> Corbs, I'm sure you know, and Todd, I mean, I don't know if it's just like the English environment, but you know, you don't know what you're going to get. Talk about Japan. Like you go into the locker room on an English team and I was like, my jaw would drop some days. Like what is going on in here? Um, but I actually kind of like thrived in the craziness. You know, I loved it. I was like, and especially like <clears throat> we went to sale and I'm sure you guys are familiar with Steve Diamond, who's not there um, anymore, but was for a very, very long time. And, you know, the, depending on who you talk to, they've got completely different perspectives. I actually loved how crazy he was. I was like, you know, and I think he kind of liked that. I liked, he was crazy. And, you know, I was so nowhere near like the top end of the team, but I remember I was starting, you know, he, he signed me. Um, I started at first wave. He re-signed me for two more years. And it was, I think he was so big on the culture more so than anything. Like we were way under the salary cap. We were always you know, for the tenor I was there um, and nothing to do with me, we were overperforming, you know, we were right around that top six, which is a huge achievement, achievement, you know, considering the budget and the people who was managing at the time. But um, just one funny story with dimes. I remember like, I was always like nervous to talk to him and I just felt like, you know, that's the thing about when you're overseas, your spot can be taken at any given moment. Right. Like, you know, and so I was always like, I don't know. I was just anxious, you know, because it meant so much to me to be playing at that level. That was always my dream. And I remember I asked him if I could go play for Canada uh, and miss a couple weeks of preseason. And usually it's like a no brainer, right? Like if you're going to England, if you know, and usually, but I was just nervous to ask him. And anyways, he let me go. And I remember we played um, Samoa and I pushed Alessandra to a laggy, right? So I like I gave him a shove and we're at our home stadium, you know, thousands of people watching i'm like yeah what's up push him and then he looked at me and i'm like oh my god he's gonna hit me here and my career is gonna be over and anyways the ref ref breaks it up and i walk away and i'm like talking to phil mack who was the nine at the time we've got a line out at samoa's line out so he's gonna do a box kick i'm like he's gonna absolutely hammer me here i'm like phil please if you want me to see another day don't let him buy you on this box kick and i was so petrified anyways fast forward we go to um vancouver this is a bit of a long story but we play our game and I think it was against the U S and I won't tell you what happened. We'll skip that part. And we start having some beers. So we're having some beers. Oh, Todd will tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You'll fill in the pieces. I'll, I'll leave that bit out. Todd can pick it up there. Um, so we go back to the hotel and we're staying in the same hotel as Samoa. And I've probably had like eight beers or something there. And, uh, I see Alessandro and I'm like, oh man, this could be awkward. He's got a beer in his hand. And I'm like, oh my God, this could be like the end of me now. And anyways, he was like the nicest guy, you know, like these Islander teams, the Pacific Islanders are so nice. Uh, so I ended up having some drinks with them and I definitely was overserved. Like, I mean, how many beers can the Tulagis drink? I mean, probably a lifetime for me in one night. So I was trying to keep up with them. Anyways, I FaceTimed Sammy Tutupo. So it's eight hour difference, right? So it's like 12 at night, eight in the morning. Sammy Tutupo sits at the front of the team meeting, like literally right beside Dimes. Like, and so Dimes giving the speech. I FaceTime Sammy, telling him I'm with, you know, Samoa, like having a great time. Sammy just passes the phone to Dimes. And I'm so like, I'm out of this world. And I'm like, Dimes, what's up? And he looks and he's like, what is going on in front of everyone? Sammy absolutely threw me under the bus and Dimes writes me an email being like, Phil, I just want to let you know your, your contract's terminated. And my heart, I woke up to this email. I'm like, oh my God. So I call Dimes and he's like, I'm just fucking with you, Phil. It's all good. <laughs> but that, that, that like sums up Dimes and Sale because like, they thrive off that chaos. Like I could only imagine that team meeting when Sammy handed the phone and like, yeah. I'm drunk. Dimes is playing it up. He shows everyone the email that he's writing to me the next day. And, uh, you know, that was just, it was just one of those things though, where like those stories at sale, I think are, um, are one of the teams where it had 
the best team culture. I think we were really, really, really close. And I think that played a huge role in the success that, you know, ultimately as crazy as Dan does all the flack he gets, like look at the position sales in now, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So um, that was one of my stories anyways. That's class. That's class. I know, I know Sammy Tutupo well from back in, when I lived in New Zealand, uh, you know, training and, and working out with him. And obviously, uh, Alex uh, uh, played with him in Japan for a couple of years, then played with him in, uh, in Newcastle. So, uh, you know, they definitely can't put down uh, the, the beers and the gin with the Tulai gin. Um, but, uh, just, you know, rugby, like they say, rugby, the, the world is small, but whenever you have rugby, you know, you just throw a couple names out there, the world just gets even smaller. And, and uh, no, that, that lights me. That's, that's so class. <laughs> And we've all been in team meetings whenever, uh, you know, a phone goes <laughs> yeah. off and the team rules. Uh, I can't imagine what, uh, what kind of stank you got from, uh, from the rest of the crew. That's classic. All right. We've had, we've had some Steve Diamond stories. I, I want some Rob Hoadley stories. No, Sean Edwards stories. <laughs> Ho, Hodes let me in on a little yeah. secret. You guys obviously go way back to Wasp, but you've, you've also got some Sean Edwards stories, haven't you? Hodes, I'm sure you've got more than me. I mean, you know, just for perspective, when I was at Wasps, and I say like at Wasps, this was, you know, taking that hard route. I, um, through a connection, I was out, I was playing for Easter and the Champ, but I was unpaid at Wasps, you know, just training, trying to get a, a break. So I was like doubling up. I mean, it was the toughest year I've ever had. Um, but I was like absolutely petrified of Sean. I mean, I remember Hodes, we were like standing outside. And, you know, like I'm so out of my comfort zone here and we've got all these players and then Sean, like an imaginary ball, we're in like a circle and he's like, move it, move it. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with my hand? He's like looking at me and I'm like, oh my God, like, what do you want me to do here? Like an imaginary ball moving our hands. He's obviously trying to mimic, like keeping the ball moving as you, as you, uh, but it was like, you know, he probably said like 10 words to me that entire year, but that was one of them where he like gave me this death stare and he's like, move the ball. And I'm like, I don't have a ball. <laughs> you're moving the imaginary ball wrong yeah yeah what are you doing <laughs> just yeah just for context just for context on sean and I, we should do some more stories later on in the pod there were so many stories of this guy he is a legend by the way he's the nicest bloke in the world i absolutely love him and he's so generous he's just the best bloke but he's clean off there's so many Sean Edwards stories that there was a drinking game at Wasps and you had to say a Sean Edwards story as, uh, as it gets to you, you say a Sean Edwards drink, neck your drink and then it goes to the next person and it would do about three laps. There could be 40 people in, in the game and it would go around about three, three oh. times with a new story. One of the best characters in the game. My opinion to be a good coach is I think you've got to be a little crazy. Um, I also did a year with London Welsh in the premiership. And I don't know if you guys know Lynn Jones. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Like talk about like, I was just like, what is going on half the time? But he was, again, I don't know if it was just our team. We like thrived off the craziness, you know, and it was like, if this is how crazy training is, there is nothing that can phase us in a game. You know what I mean? And he would just do like the weirdest things. But I remember doing like a team circle and he would just be peeing in the middle of a circle, giving us a, a team talk. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if this is like a hype up right now or like what is like going on. I don't know. There's some method to the madness, but um, he was he was crazy, man. I mean, I think that's a Welsh thing as well, because Paul Turner was a classic where he came in one, this was, I wasn't there, but I've heard this story, so it could be completely made up. But that he came in at half time and the team were losing badly. And he, he's just calm. He just looks around and he goes, you can tell how good a team is by how much funny there is in the stadium. I've had a look around and I can't see any. Have a think about it. And that was it. And he walked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Oh. I believe it. I believe that. Speaking of stories, while we're here, <laughs> and, and we got USA Canada, we got we got we got two of the boys, we got two of the poster boys, the two of the internationals that went around the block. One of you two's got to have some good uh, USA Canada memories with the two of you on the field. Love to hear something. Todd, you want to take this one, or wh who wants to start oh, man. here? I mean, the thing is that that's the greatest. I mean, sports rivals. That's what uh, what what makes sports go, and and there isn't any uh, love lost whenever. 
you know, the Eagles take on Canada uh, or, or vice versa. But I mean, just the fierce battle between uh, between the two nations. And it was there's nothing like Test Rugby, but uh, there's nothing like Test Rugby when it's a rival after retiring. And I didn't think it whenever I did, because you, you, you kind of learned to like, OK, these are the people you, you kind of hate. These are the people that you, you object. But once once you kind of hang up the boots, even even after, you know, games, you'd be like, OK, you're, you're cordial, but you're not really, you know, mates, mates. But once hanging up the boots and once you're able to have these conversations and have this, it's a, it's a huge respect because we're up against the same thing. And, you know, I've definitely uh, been in a lot of pain, I felt some sorrow in the heart, uh, felt you know, had some of my best games against Canada. Uh, but you know, it's, uh, it, it's one of those awesome things that, that played a huge chapter and informed who I am without, without a doubt. Yeah. I think just to follow what Todd said there, I mean, obviously it was, you know, the biggest game for us in so many ways whenever we played the States, but I think it is funny because, you know, I'm such a big proponent of like getting to know, you know, your teammates certainly. And also like in, in, in the prem and stuff, I thought because guys are always interchanging, you get to know these other guys and half the time you could play a team uh, and you're, you're best friends with a lot of the guys. So I always love that with the States. I definitely agree. Like Todd, no offense. I didn't really want to talk to you as much as cordial. You know what I mean? It was just like, you never, but when we were at the breakers, I remember being like, Oh my God, I hope Todd signs with us. You know, like I remember like being really excited because that was my first time that I got to know American rugby players, you know, like on a, on a personal level where you're actually playing with them. Otherwise I had like, the only thing I, you know, I was playing with Nguenya, for example, who I'd lined up against and absolutely hated on the field. And I just thought it was super cool to get to like know these guys, you know, train with them, go out for beers with them. And it was just a completely different perspective, which I think is cool in so many ways now for these Canadian guys, you know, because they're going to play each other and like they'll definitely be up for the game. But it's back to that, like, well, I think what makes rugby so special over any other sport you know I've, I've been around a lot of other pro athletes and they don't have the same thing that rugby does which is that like shake a hand have a beer mentality after a game and i think it's really really special and i think it'll it'll build that usa canada relationship even more phil thanks so much for coming on uh, from the bottom of our hearts mate we've had great laughs great insight good times a bit of usa canada banter as well uh, what more could we ask for Thanks so much, guys. I mean, it was a blast from the past. I, I'm feeling my age right now, um, but I really, really did enjoy it. And uh, hopefully we can do this again next time. Um, Todd, I think beer's on you or what? Always. <laughs> That's how to end the rivalry. Get your rivals yeah. to uh, buy the beer. Well played, Phil. <laughs>